I told you, everything is top secret at the atomic plant in Oak Ridge. So when this fella came through the gate with a wheelbarrow full of Excelsior, the security police noticed that... Oh, for heaven's sake, these interruptions. Excuse me, Barry. Oh, hello, Don. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Don, how come you brought the sportsman, uh, sportsman quartet over? We're not rehearsing. Well, I have some packages they want to put under your tree. Oh, oh well, come on in, boy. Merry Christmas, Don. Same to you, Barry. You too, Rochester. Merry Christmas, Mr. Wilson. Hey, Jack, I've never seen such a beautifully decorated tree. Well, thanks, Don. Say, what's that package you have under in your pocket there? Well, that's a present for my wife. Oh, oh, what is it? Well, it, well, it's something very unusual. She'd be crazy about it. Well, what is it, Don? What is it? Well, Jack, we have a family album at home, and in it are several pictures of me when I was in poly, high school, grammar school, and my wife asked me so many times for a baby picture. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Say, Don, did you have one of those baby pictures, you know, where you're new, lying on a bearskin rug? No, so I went down this morning and had one taken. <laughs> Well, it's really beautiful. Well, what is it? 
is a picture of the sun rising over the downtown branch of the California bank. <laughs> yeah, I'll hang it between the pictures of my sponsor and Mr. Paley. You know, it looks so nice. Hey, hello, Polly. Oh, say, kids, I want to show you something I taught Polly to do just for Christmas. Oh, Polly. Now, Polly, Polly, recite the poem Daddy taught you. Now, come on, Polly. Was the night... Come on. Was the night before Christmas and all through the house... Go on, go on. Not a creature was stirring, not even a... Uh... Come on, Polly. Not even a... Not even a what? Not even a M O U S E. Moose. <laughs> That's too old. Stupid parrot. <laughs> Before you came in, I will tell you the most wonderful story about a man on a wheelbarrow. I knew it. I knew it. Come in. Hello, everybody. Oh, Mr. Denny, I just dropped by to tell you I saw your television show last Sunday and I enjoyed it to my heart's contentment. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Kitzel. The whole program was wonderful, but that French girl you had on with you was something special. Oh, you mean that, that little French girl, that Helene Francois? Yes, she was so beautiful and what a idea. How I would love to see her in prison. Could you get me a ticket? I think so. In fact, I'll try to get you two tickets so you can take your wife along. All right, you have. And just get one. <laughs> oh, uh, I see what you mean. Not that I got anything against my wife. Bless her heart. In fact, for a Christmas present, she needed me this tie I'm wearing. Hey, that's a very pretty tie, Mr. Kissel. Oh, this is no. Wait till I unbutton my jacket. Now, look. Oh, she even needed a belt to match the tie. It's still the tie. She didn't know when to stop. <laughs> well, Mr. Benny, I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Kessel. Merry Christmas. Now, let's see. What was I doing before Mr. Kessel came in? You were in the middle of a joke. Yeah, that's right, Jackson. You were telling us an antidote. No, no, Phil. That's anecdote. Antidote. You always thought it was antidote. No, no, Phil, it's anecdote. A N E C D O T E. <laughs> that she can spell, but mouse to her is moose. <laughs> you know, sometimes that bird. Well, I hope that's Dennis. Then I can tell the story to everybody. Oh, hello, Dennis. Trick or treat. <laughs> Say, Dennis, this is Christmas. Why in the world would you think it's Halloween? I just passed Phil's house and there are bottles dumped all over the lawn. <laughs> Dennis, those weren't dumped. Phil had a party and those are calling cards. Oh. Now, come on in. Hello, Dennis. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Say, Dennis, I was just telling a... Dennis, what happened? Your jaw looks like it's swollen. It is. Why? What's wrong, kid? I had a tooth pulled this morning. Oh, that's a shame, Dennis. Was it hurting you? No. Did you have a cavity in it? No. Then why did you have it pulled? My uncle's a dentist, and that's what he gave me for Christmas. <laughs> well, that's the most stupid thing I ever heard. Letting your uncle pull your tooth. Oh, it's not so stupid. Jack's right, Dennis. How could you let your uncle pull your tooth for a Christmas present? It looks silly in my mouth. Why? He already had a gift wrap. <laughs> hmm. Do you mean that you... Mary, are you going to go along with this thing? <laughs> Jack. This is so fantastic. I've got to find out. All right. <laughs> Dennis, do you mean that you let your uncle pull one of your teeth every Christmas? Uh-huh. And then I can't wait until my birthday so he'll pull another one. Well, why? That's how I keep my uppers and lowers even. <laughs> Look, Dennis, three more years and you can call me gummy. <laughs> Dennis, it's Christmas. Why can't you come in here just once a year? And Oh, my goodness, look what I forgot. What? This present here under the tree. It's for Ed, the man who guards my ball. Well, Jack, that's certainly nice of you to remember him. Down all the years that Ed has been down there, never once have I forgotten him at Christmas. Excuse me, kids, I want to go down there and give this present. See the 
bridge across the moat. <laughs> oh, there it is. continue here on Sirius XM 148. It's Lionel Barrymore as Scrooge. Right after this break. What do Julia Roberts, Chris Pratt, Brian Reynolds, and Lady Gaga all have in common? They're all on Entertainment With You Radio's Top 30 Interviews of 2018. Oh, congratulations in the film. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Julia Roberts. <laughs> and so many more. The biggest stars of the year are all here. EW Radio's Top 30 Interviews of 2018. Throughout the week, exclusively on Sirius XM 105. Or we'll listen on demand, online, or with the Sirius XM app. Who says you can't have your cake and eat it? With our vast network. 
network facilities at your disposal, you can hop in the car and get away from it all and still not miss out on any of the exciting entertainment you've been enjoying regularly at home. The latest news, our daytime dramas, the music and comedy shows that fill each evening with joy are all available to you whether you're perched at the top of the highest mountain or are dangling a toe in the edge of the sea. The six dramatic shows that follow each other on CBS Radio every Sunday bring Broadway and Hollywood to you, whether you're drifting downstream on a barge or flying high in a sports plane built for two. And the biggest variety shows can be enjoyed to the hilt on a pocket-sized transistor as well as the huge console radio in a luxurious country hotel. Summer is a time for fun outdoors. Summer is a time for travel. With CBS Radio at your side, summer is a time for top flight entertainment. No matter where you happen to be, no matter what else you happen to be doing. Bright and sparkling. Yes, sir. Light and lively. Yes, sir. Clear and clean. Yes, sir. There is no finer beer. And that's a fact. Go where you will, pay what you will. No better beer than CV can be had at any price. No better beer than CV can be made at any cost. CV's famous formula provides for only the more costly premium quality material. Then, CV's careful processing and controlled aging gives you a beer that you're sure is pure. CV's flavor will tell you all of that. You'll find it bright and sparkling from foam to finish. Robust and full flavored as a real honest-to-goodness beer should be. CV's flavor will tell you that you're enjoying a premium quality beer at no premium in price. You're sure it's pure. And it's just as smooth. It's smooth. 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 And you're sure it's pure. That, my friends, was the voice of a man, an enthusiastic friend of CV, describing what he likes about champagne velvet. The beer with a million dollar flavor. You too will find that CV is smooth from foam to finish. More than that, rich, creamy foam that billows on top of your glass, right down to that last delicious drop. You'll find CV bright and sparkling, light and lively, with a clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure and stamps it as a beer of real premium quality. Premium quality that costs you no. Just as smooth, and you're sure it's pure. There is no finer beer. And welcome back to this Radio Classics Christmas Block, where it's time now for an annual tradition. Lionel Barrymore started a comedy drama beginning in 1940, so it continuing for the rest of the decade. Initially on NBC, the latest penny time on CBS, ABC, and even Mutual. While each year during Christmas, we have a... Instead gave his traditional performance as Scrooge. This is the first time it was presented, originally airing back on Christmas Eve of 1942. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On this Christmas Eve, once again, Lionel Barrymore sets aside his role as mayor of the town take you back to a Christmas Eve 100 years ago with his unforgettable portrayal of Scrooge. And now, Lionel Barrymore in Dickens of Christmas Carol. Once upon a Christmas Eve, on a mean and shabby street in London, stood the warehouse of Scrooge and Marley. And Marley was seven years dead, but Scrooge never bothered to paint out the name. It was a waste of time, paint, and money. Oh, he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, was Ebenezer Scrooge. A squeezing, grasping, clutching, covetous old sinner. A frosty rhyme was on his head and on his eyebrows and on his wiry chin. And the cold within him iced his office in the dog days and didn't thought out one degree at Christmas. A fact that could be attested by Bob Cratchit, his overworked and shivering clerk. <laughs> Stone's gone out, Mr. Scrooge. Indeed. It was a very small fire to begin with. Uh, tell me, 
rich treasure? You like working here? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, sir. And you have me to the 15 bob by a favor every week? Need? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. You, you see, there's my wife, and Tiny Tim, and Belinda, and Martha. Yes, and then may I suggest you forget the fire and get back to your work. Unless, of course, you would prefer to keep business by losing your situation. Losing? Oh, no, sir. I'll get on with copying those letters at once, sir. I'm very sorry, Mr. Scrooge. It won't happen again, sir. I, I promise you. And take that glass and little sweep away from my door. Christmas Carol. <laughs> Christmas Eve, his only nephew, Fred, stopped by the warehouse. Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas, Uncle. Uh, humbug. Christmas, a humbug? Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Very well, then. What right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Uh, humbug. Oh, don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? Why, well, at my way, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Tell you! Keep Christmas in your own way. Let me keep it in mine. I've always thought of Christmas as a good time. A, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. <laughs>
fall outside. The ghost of Jacob Marley passed.